Pixelkin. I'm Grant Roberts. I'm lead designer at uh, Eline Media. Could you tell us a little bit about Eline Media and your mission? Um, Eline Media uh, was formed uh, a few years ago. The goal was to make games that were both uh, mm -hmm. educating and also entertaining. When you say education, when you say edutainment, stuff yeah, like that, yeah. it's a loaded word, and, you, and and people kind of will instinctively uh, kind of come back for that. We wanted to to branch out into doing actual like entertainment software in addition to the education focused stuff. Uh, so we were looking to get into that at the same time that the Cook Inlet Tribal Council or CITC uh, was looking for a way to use games as a kind of a modern way to tell the stories that have been passed down for for thousands of years to share the culture, the, like the living culture of the Alaska Native people, of the mm -hmm. Inupiaq people. What were some of the challenges that you faced? We needed to make the game as authentic as we could, and we were not interested in, in kind of just doing something on our own for a few months and then presenting it to them be like what do you think yes or no okay good we're done <laughs> like we met with all with with I, I believe over 40 members of the community that we regularly mm -hmm. uh, communicated with and collaborated with but then we we worked extensively with Ishmael Hope who is the game's writer and a, 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 a an Inupiaq and Tlingit uh, mm -hmm. storyteller we worked with him all the time and we worked with uh, Ron Brower, uh, who is a, an elder in the, in the community, and James Nagayak, who is an elder in the community, and they, we listened to their stories, and James Nagayak was the narrator in the game, and we got to just sitting around a conference table and listening to them tell mm -hmm. stories. It was just completely transformative and completely unlike anything that I've done in this business before. <laughs> Finding out what the what the true nature of things should be and like what the what the core values of the Inupiaq community are and incorporating that into the game and and doing that is it can sometimes be a challenge when you when you want to take that and turn it into compelling gameplay you know uh, but the we 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 really wanted to hit the values of of intergenerational exchange uh, resilience or survival and uh, interdependence and. We we put those things in the game. Interdependence features very heavily with the you know the relationship between Nuna and Fox, the relationship with nature and the community and things like that. And so we wanted we it, it was a challenge to make sure that that we were accurately conveying those values and being a good steward and and caretaker of the culture, and still making a game that like we talked about earlier that wasn't just education first. We mm -hmm. didn't feel, we we didn't want people to feel like they were going to school. Were you surprised by the reception to the game? We were surprised. We weren't surprised that it was received well because we knew that we we were proud of what we made. Um, we were just surprised at, at, at you know being featured on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and NPR and like Time Magazine and all these other things. Was there a point when you were like, "This is so much pressure that we're <laughs> under"? <laughs> there, there was there was a little bit of that. I mean, not in a you know, oh my god, what are we going to do? Can, we can't pull this off. Way it was more. Just the the kind of awesome responsibility that we had of taking something that was real and taking a culture that was that was still living, not not a not something that was lore based or, or historical. In some ways, it was historical, but they're still here. They're still mm -hmm. a living culture, as you can see from the videos that we have in the game. And now that we've we've done not all of the hard work, but a lot of the hard work in getting the process set up and the team and the relationships we can use that institutional knowledge for the next thing and make it that much better and, and, and learn from those lessons. Can you tell us anything about the next thing? There are a lot of things that we're, that we're looking into right now. We love Nuna and Fox, obviously. Everybody loves Nuna and Fox because they're adorable. Uh, and so I want to, not I, we want to tell more stories with them. And there are, there are so many hundreds, literally hundreds of stories that we, that we combed through before we settled on the story of Kanuksayuka for, for interpretation into Never Alone. And there are all kinds of other stories that are amazing like that. We're also, you know, we've developed this great relationship with the Alaska Native community and with CITC and Upper One Games. We're all kind of a, a family now. And so we, we might explore making more things set in Alaska, you know, trying to, to convey the values that we were hoping to convey in Never Alone and convey the concepts that we covered and the cultural insights that we thought were really important, but do it in a way that's more integrated into the game itself because mm -hmm. 
we if in a perfect world we would have done that with Never Alone. Like mm -hmm. the, instead of watching a video, even though our videos are amazing and I really love how they turned out and getting to meet to see the real people is was kind of unique. It would have been even more rewarding, I think, if you know you would have learned the legend of the Aurora people and coming down and taking your head and playing soccer with it from a character in the game or seeing that happen instead of kind of having to find it after the fact. So that's the kind of thing that we're exploring right now is other opportunities and different genres and, and ideas for how we can more, how we can have the culture suffuse the game even more, you know? We've got a lot of options right now. We're trying to figure out which ones we want to pursue, but uh, it's, it's a good position to be in. And there's lots of other uh, stuff that we're doing with, with just the, the core Never Alone experience, like the Mac, the version for the Mac is going to come out very soon now. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking into other platforms as well. There's a lot of stuff in our future.